I tried to explain what we've been going through and I found it really difficult to find the words because it's not about clearing up, tidying up, organizing. It's a totally different level, a level which I hadn't expected. It's looking at things differently. A perspective you can't see when you're in it. And that's why it's so incredibly helpful to have you here to just make me take that step two, three, four, five steps back and reevaluate. Because it's much safer to put it where it's always been and don't think about it. That corner is haunting me. And it really is that haunted feeling. A wedding dress is there in your don't wedding suit. This is what you call the corner. The corner. We've been working towards this. Mm -hmm. um, I find this very difficult. The process of talking through it uh, item by item helps. There's something so deep in me that wants to tackle this. So it's not like I feel I have to but it's something I want to do. Mm -hmm. Not want because I'm so looking forward to it, but I know that it will give me space, freedom, light. And I know that Jeroen wouldn't want me to hold on to these things to weigh me down. He would want us to be full of life, full of, full of the future, and this isn't the future. What's the future? My flirt. But I want to bring part of this into our future. But the last thing I want is for Fleur to stand here. Because like, oh my God, this is what I have to look through. I don't want her to open the box and say, full of pride. Look, this was from Gabby. That's what I want her to be able to. And for me, it's not about the quantity and things. It's the story behind things. But tackling it, that's a whole other story. Yeah. And I'm looking at files over there which have to do with the court case and the sale of the house, and mm -hmm. which aren't all pleasant. And I don't know if I have to keep them or not. I'm going to close the doors here. What do you hope to celebrate today? Jeroen's life and also the achievement we've made and I don't know if achievement is the right word but 
maybe how far we've come from a very, very, very dark place to a place where not even light is coming in, but there is light and there's sometimes some clouds. And four years sounds like a long time, but it's not. It really isn't a long time. Oh, <laughs> lottery <laughs> to check if we won like five, four years ago. Bought the day after Flo was born. Spoon's oh. ashes. In a jam jar. <laughs> yes, you do. I don't want to keep the box. I remember that the lady from the crematorium or from the um, yeah. from the undertakers actually came to ours and dropped off the bag like she was doing magnificent home delivery. It's like this is the heaviest ashes I've ever had. She did not say that. She just said that. It's really great. Anything's um, bye. And that's yes. a stupid thing, right? I've been holding on to it for yeah. so long, and every time I see it. Yeah. I see the undertaker opening the door. I see myself. I drove back to the Netherlands the following day. I was in the driver's seat and Fleur was right behind me and in the middle was Jeroen's ashes. That's all that's coming back to me. And I drove all the way on my own from London to here. I put my mum in the garden. Yeah. I want to do that in spring. Mm -hmm. Nice flower, plant. I'll put that there for now. May I? Yeah. I see some light. There is. <laughs> Uh, it takes some well. easy things over there. I don't know what's easy, honey. <laughs> I'm going through a stage where I'm like, I'm actually really angry. I'm really angry. Where do you feel that? Like right here. Oh, in your stomach, yeah? Right there, yeah. What is it? Uh, moments where you can't breathe. Uh -huh. It's just like literally, there's a, a rock there. But I've been so good at telling myself and being positive and moving forward and living by example and being the best mom I could possibly be. But deep down, I've never acknowledged that I'm angry. And now I'm realizing slowly that it is so important to acknowledge every single emotion you feel and you go through. Because otherwise I'm just putting it away and it'll come up another time. I literally thought I had to do it all by myself and I didn't know who I had to ask for, for help. And that aspect, that the help was there from the first moment for him, and not once for us, that makes me angry. I've had a letter of excuse from the Crown Prosecution Service and the police. Well, obviously, they're deeply sorry. And they've also said, yes, mistakes have happened. When someone is known to the authorities with a mental health issue, a red flag comes up now. Before that, you had to look into the paperwork to actually see and search, well, is there something wrong with him? Now it's like, be careful, red flag. Doesn't sound like much, but when you're actually out on the streets and you, as a police officer, and you know that person is known to the authorities because of mental health issues, you deal with them differently. Things are being taken seriously. It's small steps, but important steps. It seems like a big step it's to a big me. Step. Yeah. And I don't think I've fully acknowledged how big it actually is. And that's what's been changed because of the inquest. His death couldn't have been in vain. I don't know, we started six months ago. And to just go back to where we were six months ago and where we are now, it feels very different. Very different. Yeah. Thank you. Come here. I'm very proud of you.